This was the shot that cost Belmonte his 16th major, but he was actually pretty fortunate to even be in this position. With the USBC Masters this year, all eyes were on two people, Jason Belmonte and Anthony Simonson. Jason Belmonte won this tournament a record four times, and was known for winning three of them in a row from 2013 to 2015. On the other hand, Anthony Simonson won this tournament three times, and won the last two in a row. With a win this year, he would match Belmonte's record of winning this event four times. But because this tournament is open to those outside the PBA, there are often underdogs who make huge runs in this tournament. So in reality, anything can happen. The oil pattern was 44 feet long and saw some pretty high scores, with a 214 average needed to make the bracket. Notably, EJ Tackett placed second with a 233 average. But those pins all go out the window during the bracket tournament, where if you lose twice, you go home. Simonson was not having a good time, shooting under 600 twice and losing to D. Ron Booker and Zach Wilkins to get eliminated. You can tell he wasn't that happy. Belmonte's run was also cut short by EJ Tackett, giving him his first loss. But in the loser's bracket, Belmonte performed almost perfectly, winning 4 matches in a row and then winning a seeding round, where, interestingly enough, he eliminated EJ Tackett. This led to the stepladder, where the familiar D. Ron Booker is the first seed, going through the whole tournament undefeated. But first, let's see who gets the privilege to face Belmonte. Sam Cooley or Richie Tease. First off was Richie Tease, who was using a pretty popular ball throughout the tournament, which was the attention star. He seems to miss a bit left and go a bit high, but the ball still strikes. Sam Cooley is playing the lanes a bit more left than Richie Tease, and he's also using a strong pearl ball, the Crimson Jackal. His shot in the right lane looks pretty perfect, but on the left lane, he goes a bit light and leaves a 10 pin. Richie also gets a perfect strike on the right lane, but since his last shot on the left lane was high, he moves a bit left to compensate. He shoots the ball out too far, however, making the ball go light and leaving him a split. Since Sam's doing pretty well, he makes some pretty small adjustments here. On the right lane, he moves slightly left, but throws almost an identical shot. On the left lane, he moves a bit right to try to carry that 10 pin. He does, but leaves an unlucky 7 pin. Richie's next shot seems okay, but the ball doesn't have enough energy in the back end, leaving a 10 pin. On the left lane, to avoid going light, he moves right. This is a pretty solid move, but yet again, he gets a 10 pin. Meanwhile, Sam is controlling these lanes pretty well moving slightly left and slowing down his ball speed to make sure that ball has enough energy to drive through the pins. On the left lane though, he goes a bit too slow, which is why he leaves a 4 pin here. For Richie's next shot, I think he moves slightly left and moves his breakpoint in a little bit more too. Just trying to give himself a different look to carry that 10 pin. This ball does drive better, but leaves a 3-6-10. He does something pretty similar on his left lane, slow down the ball a little bit and move left. This ball goes slightly high, but once again it drives through the pins nicely and adds a strike. Meanwhile, Sam is throwing pretty perfect shots. On the left lane, he makes sure that his speed isn't that slow, and this time instead of a high shot, it's a flush strike. Richie really needs to figure out these lanes quickly. On the right lane, he slows it down and moves a bit left again, but it's a bit too slow and leaves a 4 pin. As for his left lane shot, he just misses a ton to the right, and this game is pretty much over. However, on Sam's next two shots, they both go high, so there is some transition to consider when thinking about the next match against Jason Belmonte. I think he considers a ball change here, but his look is still pretty good on this ball, so there's no reason to do that. Because of the transition, Sam's going to start the next match almost a whole arrow to the left. It doesn't look too bad, but it leaves a 10 pin. Surprisingly, Jason Belmonte uses a ball that he hasn't been really using that week, which is the Tor Dynamics. It's a bit of a weaker solid ball, with what I'm guessing is a strategy to maintain energy through the pins. His first shot's pretty good, but leaves a 9 pin. His next shot on the left lane is also pretty good, and strikes. On the left lane, Sam moves a whole arrow left, but on the right lane, he doesn't move as much left. Which is why I think he left the split going high. Luckily though, he made a pretty nice spare conversion. For the left lane, to carry that 10 pin, he's going to move a bit to the right and move that breakpoint a bit inside as well. It seems to work and he carries a strike. To correct his 9 pin from his last shot, Jason Belmonte makes a very standard move left, which gets another perfect strike. But interestingly enough, his ball on the left lane still goes high, even though he moved left. So there definitely is some transition going on. Speaking of which, Sam moves left again on the right lane and gets a nice mixer strike. But on the left lane, his ball just goes high, just like Belmonte's ball. A similar thing happens to Belmo again on the right lane. Makes the move left, but still goes a bit high. That's why for the left lane shot, he makes a big adjustment left, to make sure that his ball definitely does not go high again, and it ends up being a perfect adjustment and strikes. Sam gets a pretty lucky strike on the right lane. You can tell that these players are both afraid of going high. On the left lane, we see yet again Sam doing a big jump left, but unfortunately for him, it just doesn't carry as well. Meanwhile, Belmo has these lanes perfectly figured out. He moves the perfect amount left each shot and gets two more strikes in both lanes. Even though Sam does the same thing moving left, either his ball is not carry or his ball is still going too high. 
he completely lost his look that he had in the first match, which gave Belmo this win. Belmo's going to try the attention star, which has been working really well for him all week. But it might not be time for this ball right now, as he leaves a pretty ugly split. To finish the match, Cooley throws to Hyper Venom, which is a weaker Pearl ball, and gets a pretty nice look. With it hitting the pins, much better than the Crimson Jackal. Maybe if he switched to this ball earlier in the match, he could have made it more interesting. In the next match, Belmo is starting against Patrick Dombrowski. He's staying with his old ball, but is moving even further left, lofting over the gutter. I think he was too far left, as this shot went pretty light and left a split. Patrick's strategy, however, is much more different. He's using a Fate, which is ironically Belmo's signature ball, which is a bit of a weaker pearl, and he's throwing it much straighter up the lane. And he has a really nice look here, striking on both lanes. On Belmonte's next shot in the right lane, he doesn't move as far left, so his ball strikes pretty nicely. On the left lane, I still think Belmo's a bit too far left, but he stays where he is and throws it a bit slower. That was enough to hit the pocket, and the messenger did the rest of the work. Patrick is still throwing pretty good shots with his straighter line, but on the left lane, he goes slightly high, leaving a 4 pin. Belmo definitely has the right lane figured out, but on the left lane, he's still going pretty light, and this time the messenger does not hit the 10 pin. Then, I think Patrick made some pretty bad decisions here. On the right lane, his last shot went light, but he still moved further left, so it made sense that his ball went really light on this shot. Maybe that was in his head for his next shot on his left lane, but he doesn't move left that much on this lane, when this is the lane that his last shot went high on. So once again, it makes sense that this ball went really high, and he pays the price leaving this split. It was a pretty close conversion though. Belmo continues to move left, but on this right lane, it's still going high. However, this left lane is the issue. He stays in the same spot, but throws it even a bit slower. He wants to make sure the ball will turn on the corner, and he does carry the 10 pin this time. Patrick now slows down his ball in the right lane to make sure it doesn't go light again. It's closer to the pocket now, and he does carry the 10 pin for the strike. But on the left lane, he makes a great move. Moves left, but does not slow down the ball speed. His last shots went high, so he needs that ball speed to push through the oil. It works perfectly, and this is a pretty nice strike. Belmo is moving even further to the left on the right lane, and now he's having trouble with carrying that 10 pin. He's moving left again on the left lane, but this time misses left too, so he's pretty fortunate to just leave one pin. Patrick now has a nice chance to clinch the win, but on the right lane, his ball's a bit too fast and it's missed right, going light yet again and leaving a split. For the left lane, I'm not sure why but he moves back right. It turns out to not be a bad shot, but leaves a 7 pin. His next shot however is perfect, there's nothing he can do now, and all Belmont has to do is spare for the win. But Belmonte got a bit distracted and immediately missed right here. He knew it off his hand and left a horrible split. Just a terrible break to end this run. Both bowlers had pretty nice looks in the beginning, but they got pretty ugly towards the end. Let's see if that gives Devon Booker an advantage for the last game. For the last match, Patrick is playing a pretty similar line, maybe moving a bit left. The line's pretty good because this strikes. Devon Booker is using the attention star, which also seemed to work pretty well for him throughout the week. However, his first shot on his right lane hooks so early, and he almost goes Brooklyn. His second shot on the left lane is much better. Patrick's next shot on the right lane is a strike, but once again, he's still having issues with his ball going a bit light. And just like last game, he's missing left on the left lane and having issues with the ball going too high. Missing the spare was also pretty brutal. Booker's gonna move a lot left to fix his last high shot. It hits the pocket, but still leaves a 10 pin. He's still in control of the left lane though. To avoid going light, Patrick moves right on the right lane and throws a bit straighter. It's closer to the pocket, but now a 10 pin comes up. On the left lane, he's throwing it faster to make sure it does not go high, but still misses a bit left and leaves the big 4. Booker's gonna move a bit right to fix that 10 pin from his last shot, but now the ball's going a bit high and leaves a 4 pin. On the left lane, he does move left, but the ball hooks early and he goes high, but with a bit of luck, he does stay perfect on his left lane. Patrick is moving even further right to make sure his ball does not go light on his right lane. It helps as he does strike. This left lane shot is key though, he can't miss left, and he can't let the ball go high but he throws a perfect shot and he's still in it. Diron has yet to strike on his right lane though. His last shot went high so he moves a bit left and he gets a pretty nice strike here. On the left lane, he makes a big jump left to compensate for his last high shot that luckily struck. It hits the pocket and once again, he gets pretty lucky to carry the strike. Then on the right lane, Patrick's ball refuses to hook again, going light, which seems to be a struggle all day on this lane. All Booker has to do is stay clean. And with these last few shots, Diron Booker won this tournament. Thanks for watching and let me know your thoughts on these matches in the comments below.